Hi, this is Chazan Alberto Mizrahi. Stay tuned. Taped with Rabbi Doug is next. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug on your TV tonight. But Daddy, I wanna watch Monday Night Football. Forget about Monday Night Football. There's no other thing we're gonna watch on Monday but Rabbi Doug. Yeah, Rabbi Doug on TV tonight. We're gonna see Rabbi Doug. Oh, everybody talk about Doug. Shalom and welcome to Tape with Rabbi Doug. We are here in Chicago, and I am here with Chazan Alberto Mizrahi. Welcome to the show. Um, it is just a pleasure to have you on. Chazan Mizrahi is uh, one of my idols as a Chazan. As you know, we've had uh, Cantor Hirschstig on our show many times, who is the uh, uh, Chazan of the great synagogue in Jerusalem. And he and Chazan Mizrahi have toured Europe and all over the world singing together, which was my introduction, really, to them all knowing each other. I didn't realize all these famous Chazanim from all over the world knew each other and sang together until I saw all these pieces. How long have you actually been singing professionally as a Chazan, as a cantor? That's a dirty question, about 40 years. 40 years, 40 years. Where did you study Chazan? Where did you study cantorial school? I'll tell you, uh, I went to the, uh, the uh, Cantor's Institute, it was called then, at the Jewish Theological Seminary, because uh, I, I, got the dov I got to study with uh, David Kozovitsky uh -huh. and um, Max Wahlberg from Nusach, mm -hmm. and they had a fabulous uh, ethnomusicology department and history department, so I, I learned everything I know pretty much, except what I studied later, with them, and then I, I, I studied privately for about 15 or maybe 20 years with Moshe Ganchov, now, who I consider my, my, you know, my real, my true, my true mentor. When we listen to you really sing, you have a very operatic voice. Did you ever sing opera? I did, uh, yes. I did 12 years of opera at the same time as being a chazan. It was impossible. <laughs> <laughs> I did it, though. I even understudied Pavarotti in Bado in Mascara in, uh, in Miami. I did it in English, he did it in Italian, but he didn't come till two days before, and I had to do his performance, his rehearsals in Italian too, so I did both. <laughs> what, what brought you to Anche? I know Cantor Silverman uh, had, had left, and, 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 and what brought you to Anche and to Chicago? Cantor uh, Moses J. Silverman was a, a, an old friend of mine, and um, I always envied him his, um, uh, his love of life and the fact that he had a, a stable synagogue. He was there for 43 years. Yes, I taught there while he was there, so I... I he was there for 43 years. Um, he, Cantor, uh, Meisels of Cleveland, Saul Meisels, uh, I can say all of the shalom after all these people. Anyway, they were all, uh, they were all quite active and, and uh, leaders in the Cantor's assembly, uh, in which now I am an officer. That shows you that time flies. Um, Cantor Henry, who taught, who was the... Dean, I Dean of the Cantorial School. Was, was, he's been on our show many times too Great. when he was at Beth Ellen Highland Park, including his uh, final concert before he left there. Anyway, so uh, he passed away. He died. Uh, most, most Silverman died. Uh, and then for two or three years or something, uh, 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 Chazan Lubin was the cantor, uh, cantor there. But he left for, for uh, greener pastures in, in the Washington, D.C. area. And I auditioned for the position because Chicago, where I went to Yeshiva, at the Yeshiva Bess Torah. Hebrew Theological College. Uh, Hebrew Theological College. Hebrew Theological College. Uh, I went to high school there and um, I fell in love with the city. And I, I used to always tell my friends, then my wife, who we had been married quite a few years before uh, I came here, I said to her, boy, if I had some place I wanted to live, I, I would like to live in Chicago someday. And we've lived in La Jolla, California, some pretty nice places. But uh, this position became open and I went, this is Bashit. No, this is just Bashit. And uh, the rabbi and the president at the time, Rabbi Siegel and, uh, and President Neiman at the time, uh, heard me at a concert where I was singing under the belly of my cousin. Um, you know those mastodons. You you, you know those mastodons in uh, in the uh, Field Museum. So they were having a, they were having a, a dinner there, and I sang a concert under the under one of the mastodons. <laughs> so said so they put me in good company. Um, and uh, the rest is history. They called me and etc. We negotiated. And, and I got the job uh, that I've always wanted, and I've been here 20 years. I was never so anywhere else for more than five. We're so glad. We're so glad. Holy cow! You're watching tape with Rabbi Doug. We're here on tape with Rabbi Doug, and I'm here with Ida Zeldin, formerly of Chicago. She just recently turned 103 years old, and uh, she was on our show 
during her 100th birthday uh, uh, and celebrating and talking about it. And uh, she's been living out here in Los Angeles since 1962. 1962, she came out here. You know more about it than Yeah, I and before that, she was living in LaGrange, in LaGrange, Illinois, and before that, on the west side of Chicago, where she grew up. Tell me something, since you and your late husband, Ben Zeldin, moved out to Los Angeles, do you think that the the warm weather and the better weather has has been part of your being healthy for so long for yes. 103 oh. years well i think so yeah i think so yeah and to me all the form of living no smoking no horsing around uh-huh you never you never drank you never smoked never and always belonged to charitable organization which kept me busy trying to raise funds mm -hmm. or having a card party or, or wherever it is for society. I never sat home and looked at the wall. Uh -huh. you, when, you, when you moved out here, you were working in Chicago for Prudential Insurance and you transferred to Prudential Insurance here in Los Angeles, is that right? Is that how it worked? No, I don't remember now. Because you were working for Prudential out here, I remember. I can't remember. It was a long time ago. I know, I, know where, I know where the Prudential building was where you worked because when I was young, I visited you there once. It's right next to the La Brea Tar Pits, right? Right next to the La Brea Tar Pits. I remember See, that. I can't remember these things anymore. And sometimes I get de depressed because... Oh, yeah, because you can't bring things to the top of your mind not, right away. Not, not only that, but everybody used to say to me, oh, you're so smart, you're so cute, you're so this... I said, oh, cut it out. Everybody is nice, everybody is good, and everything. And yet I can't remember. But, 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 when something is brought to your memory, it all falls oh, back all in fall, place. Oh, yeah. That's why I say Chuck is my, how should I say? Your youngest son. I know, but I, he has been. He lives, he lives not far from here compared to, to the other two children you have. Okay. That, that is, that's true. He's and, here a lot. And you had all three of your sons were here yesterday with their wives visiting you. Everybody, unexpectedly, everyone came, unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. And it's nice. It's very nice. See, I want to tell you. Oh, I can't. Go ahead. My middle son. I can't remember. His Kenny. Name. Huh? Kenny. Yeah, or Stuart. Kenny. No, Kenny. Kenny. Stuart's the oldest. Yes, Stuart's the oldest. Stuart's gonna be eighty. Yeah. Yes. See, you're sharp. You know, you know those things. <laughs> yes, he I is. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Yeah, that your oldest son is going to be 80. He's 80. And here you are, 103. And you're, you're sharp as a whistle, though. I got to tell you. First of all, you knew who I was right away. You know, when you don't know that I'm showing up at your doorway, <laughs> and you, you know, you know what I'm doing here. I came to town for a wedding and to visit the family and to, to come and see you. So uh, really... Uh, and Stuart was so excited, kept talking about it. You're coming, you're coming, and he's going to stay with you. I says, but what will he do about eating? He says, well, there's a kosher restroom. When he comes, we'll go there and we'll see. We'll work it out. Yeah, there's plenty, there's plenty of kosher places in Los Angeles. Well, I want to tell you how nice it is to be able to, to be here with you and uh, to present you to my viewers on TV once again, just to, to see you. Uh, we look forward to visiting you again on your 104th birthday, God willing. Hopefully. You, you should too. have good health for many more years. You bring tears to my eyes. Uh, uh, I'm so happy to see you. Because, oh, we were always happy for you uh, as well. Thank you, family, thank you, you know thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, it's a pleasure. And the fact that you can afford to do all these things and go where you want to go, it's good because most people who are Orthodox are stuck to their business because they can't go somewhere else and they can't do. I'm very, I'm very fortunate that every once in a while when I need to get away, I'm able to. I am, uh, <laughs> well, and and, uh, well, and that's thank what's God, good. thank God. And listen, I, I'm, I'm going to visit you many more times in good health. Stay with us here on Tape with Rabbi Doug. Ida Zeldin from Chicago, living in Los Angeles, 103 years old, and still kicking. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, my name is Rabbi Pesach Kron. You're watching Tate with Rabbi Doug, and uh, I hope you all are inspired by this great show. Rabbi Olsen finished his guy new with Rabbi Zalman Nefemi Goldberg and served as the Rabbi Beit Nesin Ohev Yisrael in Baikonur. He was a senior lecturer at Makon Lev. 
We are fortunate to have him in Chicago. He served as a Rosh Hashiva at the Bank of Israel at Torah Skokie and then a Hell Rukhani at the Blitzstein Institute PI program. It is now my pleasure to, to present Rabbi Benjamin Olsen. Thank you. Thank you. I was born in 1957. And you can realize a young man at 67. I was born in Israel, as I said, in Ramadan, to my outstanding parents that came after the Holocaust to Israel when they decided to go to Israel once other part of the family had the option to go to the States. My parents came after the war. My mother was in Auschwitz and Bergen Belsen. My father was in the war. They came with Kibbutz Chafetz Chaim to Israel. They came before Milchemet Ashikru. They experienced Milchemet Ashikru and then Mifzah Kadesh. And then Milchemet Sheshet Ayamim, and as you know, in between, different terror attacks. They experienced, like, when I'm already in the picture, Milchemet Yom HaKippurim, they experienced the effort that we did, Klan Israel did, for the state of Israel to exist. They were there for us, to educate us, to do everything for for Klan Israel, for the State of Israel, to build Torah in Eretz Israel, they experienced something that it is very painful. They experienced the loss of my nephew, my sister's son, Noah, in one of those rounds in Gaza, a hero, a young man. That was an outstanding young man. 25 years after the Holocaust, that it was clear, that the Egyptian president said it clear, and everyone in Israel, including young men like I was, understood clearly that the plan is to put us into the Mediterranean Sea. They made sure that everyone knows it, because if you don't understand or obey, they try to get into the media, as it's known as Kol Mikail, into the media to make sure that they have a plan. As kids, we are prepared for the, for the terrible thing that might happen. We have to protect our homes and houses and apartments, as many of you as I look around know about it. We had to put sake hall. We had to glue our windows. We had to cover the windows that everything would not look outside. We didn't see so many men on the streets because everyone was in the army. About 8 o'clock, 8.10, we heard the siren. I remember my mother chasing after me to school to bring me back home. It was a world without CNN. Was a world that we didn't really know what's going on. But we understood that we need we need Siata Bishmaya to survive. We got into the shelter, sitting there among many, many families, with a Hava and Achba and Shalom Bereut, that Alevai, Alevai, that will have this taste forever. Everyone was for the animal sitting there and not know what's going on in the Chazit. We didn't know. The one that gave some kind of bell feeling was the one gentleman that you probably know who I'm talking about, that was talking to us through the transistor, which is a small radio with batteries. That was Chaim Herzog. And he was speaking, but really didn't say anything. Just found a way to make, to make people relax. Ladies, kids. Till the moment of Wednesday, 
in the moment of Kaf Hebeiyah, when we started to get some kind of clarity what's going on. And in my limited time to make the story that I carry with me every day. The moments that we heard, Hakotel Bayadei, I look around, everyone who was, whether you were in Chicago, in Yerushalayim, in Ramat Gan. We heard the war because the war was around the corner. It didn't make a difference if you live in Yerushalayim, if you live in Ramat Gan. Because the distance to the war was about a few miles. We heard the war from Ramat Gan the same way that obviously they heard it in Yerushalayim. Because how far is Far Saba from Ramat Gan? And since Far Saba is so close, how far is Kalkiria from Ramat Gan? We heard the war. We didn't know what's going on. Only Wednesday morning. When we heard a kotel beyadeh, and as you all know, everyone started to cry. Everyone started to cry. Everyone felt it's, it's Mashiach is coming. You didn't see any kind of differences between dati or lo dati or anti dati. Everyone was connected to God. In Ezer Omed Achar Kotleinu. That's the way we felt. That's, that's the way it was. And this kind of memories is something that is unforgettable. The beauty of our people, the miracle that came from Ibn life, that no one ignored. No one said it's not. It was no any kind of ashkafa machloket. Everyone agreed. Those are miracles and gifts that come from the Bono Shel Olam. And the way we celebrate a nest, the Ramban says at the end of Parashat Bo, min anisim hagluim amefursamim. We should learn about every turn in our lives. We should take it with us in every turn in our lives. There is Ribbono Shalalad. He loves us. And he is there for us. But the obligation is not only the hodot. The obligation is to, to take lessons. How we take our experience with the Ness with us. What do we do with it? Hazan tells us when Yehuda, the fourth son of Leah, was born, she said so clearly, "Apam odet Hashem." But it's now what Hazan says, "But amod minedes." Because it's not enough to praise the Bnei Adam, but you have to know how you take it to the next step in life. What do you do with it? So, I want to share with you. The second five minutes, was it five minutes so far? <laughs> the second five minutes are to do with the lesson. A number of years ago, standing on the podium in the graduation of TI, it makes me nervous. I always feel that my English is limited and I have no excuses, I leave your views. I came up with a vort among many, many midrashim. And I didn't realize that people pay attention to the midrashim. But they paid attention to the vort. And the vort was fabulous. I heard it from my brother-in-law. He is the head of the seminary. And he told me, the word achrayut, and if everyone heard it, it's about copyright of my brother-in-law and myself. <laughs> and he said, achrayut is a combination of few words. Achrayut is, can be cut to havarot, as we do in Hebrew. But the word ach, alef chet. To the word Achel, Aleph Chet Reish, that's the way we spell Achrayut, Aleph Chet Reish, Yudav Ka. 
But the words Aleph, Chet, Reish, you, what is a Harai? To the word Aleph, Chet, Reish, Yud, Vav, what is a And it has to be done from Aleph till Taf, Achrayut. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> and if I want to put the lessons from what I just told you about, from my own Yom Yerushalayim, the Six Days War, I can tell you the lesson was about Achrayut. But think about those people that are going to put themselves up front for their brothers, for others, for their brothers, to read and to learn about the war in Givat HaTachmoshit, to grow up with the one that was standing above the temples and was ready to do everything to protect the Jewish people and see new, and to grow up with the song Givat HaTachmoshit. To grow up with the sense of responsibility, Achrayut, for everyone else. To keep the idea of the concept of Achalai, I'll be standing up front, and you will follow me. And at the same time, to be committed to the concept of Achalai, that means you have people to give you guidance. You have people to give you what Torah expects you to do. As I said, I was asked to give the speech in a method of a personal experience, and it's not about me. I feel like that was the lesson. I tried to carry this lesson to different decisions in life. Am I doing for my brother? Am I doing for my brothers? Am I doing something that would consider acharai? Do I really follow my my lead, my, my guidance, my my rebellion? What is acharai? That's the way I took it with me when I came to the Tivmeir in Yerushalayim. Yeshivat Bnei Akiva, the Tivmeir. I believe that our prayers are about what the Navi says. The Navi says, "Al itale la chacham bechokmato, v'al itale la gibor bikvurato, v'al itale la ashir ve'oshro." It's not about kochi ve'otzem yadi. And if we do not keep this lesson, Yom Kippurim, Milchem Yom Kippurim gave us, and we, we realized it, it's siyad anishmaya, it's the yad Hashem. "Al itale la gibor bikvurato, ki im bezot itale la mitale, haskel yado auti." כי השם עושה חסד, משפט וצדקה, כי באלה חפצתי נאום השם. We have to make sure that we carry the lesson that has to do with thank you, Ribbono של עולם. Thank you, Ribbono של עולם, because without סייאת הנשמעי, nothing exists. We have to carry the lesson that, that has to do, as the Navi Micha says, יגיד לך אדם מה טוב, ומה השם דורש ממך, כי אם עשות משפט, ואהבת חסד, and more than anything else, והצנע הלכת עם אלוקיך. Remember the pictures from the six days war that were about simplicity. Would I tell you that my kids cannot understand that my dream was to be a kibbutzni? And to work half day at Matir et Israel and half day to sit and to learn? And to have an environment of והצנע הלכת עם אלוקיך? Our prayers are about, you know, today is also the outside, the outside of Shmuel Anavi, Kaf Chet Iyar. Today is the outside of Shmuel Anavi, and about Shmuel Anavi, what's written is, as Hannah requested, Zera Anashim, that will be equal to Moshe and Aaron. Moshe and Aaron are very, very different. Moshe Nebro says, was he covered in it? Aaron was, Oheb Shalom, Yehudeb Shalom, Oheb Tabriyot. How you can combine two different personalities into one person? So I heard one song of Shlomo Fischer. He said, extend me, go on. Oh, no, Yerushalayim. He said, that's what Yerushalayim is about. You can put different things into one place. And the proof is, the Pasuk in Yeshayahu says, 
ושמתי קדחות שמשותיי. קדחות? נו, זו קדחות איז. כ"ד, כ"ד, היא לשון הקודש. נגמר סרס, סאונד פייק, דנבי ישעיהו is using a word that the shorish is Aramaic. נגמר סרס, את חומות ירושלים, שמשותייך סרס ואשי חומותייך. חומותייך will be built from different stones, from שוהם, in Yashfeh. עוד פעם נספור, יוסף הצדיק, כאילו אנחנו from India, we are different. But we still can live together בחומות. ושמתי כתחות שמשותייך. כדי וכדי. מאן דאמר אחד אומר, וואן אופיני, ואנו מאן דאמר עושה את זה, נאן אופיני. And they can both be part of the חומות ירושלים. ושמתי כתחות שמשותיי. כדי וכדי. But I think we have to realize, we can build חומות ירושלים with different stones. But we have to make clear, it's still to build חומות ירושלים. Means, It's still a Choma. It's still something that separates us from the other nations. There is so much to do with today. I heard a speech from Bibi Netanyahu. So I went back to the side of Congress. We all know what he spoke about. He spoke about, he spoke about Rashi and Shirashi, to be honest. He spoke about the Pasuk who says, Ma na'asel ha'achotenu b'yom sh'yidu barba? Rashi says, What shall we do when our enemies are talking to destroy us? Rashi says, The next Pasuk, Ma na'asel ha'achotenu, What shall we do when we are, when they want to destroy us? And Rashi says, Im chomai nivnei aliyah tirat kesef. We will be standing with Choma to strengthen our Emunah, to strengthen our Torah, to make sure who we are, that we will not get into any kind of cultural mixed marriage. That's it. I'm not sure. If Choma in Yivnei Aliyah Atirat Kesef says Rashi, we'll have Yivah Kodesh Uvet Abkhira. We have to struggle, to clarify, to define clearly What is our achrayot that I spoke about? How we make sure we build the right choma? We have different tastes. We can come up with different approaches. But we all gather into one choma. Because once we will have, Omdot Ayu Agreinu, says Rashi, Bish'arai Yerushalayim. Our strength is based on Sha'arai Yerushalayim. Sha'arim ha-metsuyanim ba'alacha. To make sure who we are. To make sure who is our identification. And more than everything else, to build the Hava, the Ahava between each other. We have to strengthen our Torah, we have to strengthen who we are, we have to strengthen the Ezzan Hashem, Yerushalayim Abnuya, Ki Ir Shechubra La Yachda, Shehosai Yisrael Chavirim Zelazi. Amen. This is Naftali Hershtik, and you're watching Tate with Rabbi Dak. Welcome back. Hazan, I want to thank you so much for being with us. I wish you much Hatzlacha success in all your endeavors and all your music. We look forward to having you on again at the Jewish Festival as we met you on before. And, and uh, we just love you. And thank you for being with us. Remember, check out our website, www.tvrabbi.com, where you can see our shows on the web. And if you want to email us or email the Hazan, I'll be happy to forward it to him, info at tvrabbi.com. Hope to see you next time and hope to see you again soon right here on Tape with Rabbi. Shalom, everyone. Take care, everybody. This has been a Taped with Rabbi Doug production.